It's time to face our fears and work on the disaster that is the steering. So we'll start off with why is the steering on our CJ a disaster? It is because we have a combination of parts that aren't supposed to work together. They weren't designed to work together. All of them will do the job that they're intended to do, but there is no off the shelf link to make them all work together. And the reason that is, is we have an 84 CJ7, which is the grill, the axle, and the steering box and all the arms that we have. They're all 84 CJ7. We have a 1991 YJ frame, which in addition to moving the placement of the steering box, also moves the springs outboard a little bit. Then to make it even better, I did what I thought was a free four inch lift kit by making it spring over, which means this, this axle is supposed to go in the middle here and I moved it to the bottom, which is a free four inch lift kit. But guess what? Nothing is free. The very first challenge that we're up against is the factory YJ steering box mounts on a bracket that mounts in two holes here and two holes on the bottom. And I have it right here, it's cast iron. And you can see these two holes go up here and these two holes bolt in from the bottom. Well, when that bracket is installed, the steering box would have to go through our grill. And we don't want it to go through our grill. So what we're going to have to do is make a new bracket that moves the steering box down and forward just a little bit. And the reason we have to go forward a little bit is when we get this mounted, we want to get it as high as we can in the Jeep for clearance reasons. So if I kind of, that bolt hole right now will nearly line up, but that puts the steering box against the leaf spring bolt and against the frame right here. So what we're gonna need to do is move it forward a little bit. And we can get away with that because our pitman arm is actually not in the same plane as our where our drag link attaches to the spindle. So we'll move it forward just about a half an inch and move it down and flatten out the angle of it a little bit. And then that will make everything clear. And also as a bonus, our power steering lines will be clear of the grill at that point as well. So that's the first thing we have to do. We started out with our two marks for our original holes. And then those are just two marks that I placed where I knew I could get enough room for this other bolt hole, four and an eighth apart. I'm not gonna give you all the measurements because it doesn't matter. Because this is specific to this. If you were doing this, you'd have to measure it all out anyway. So basically what I did, I marked these two holes. And then I figured out where I wanted my back hole to be and where my front hole needed to be approximately. And I just set them level with the frame. Then using those two bolts, bolt holes, I used a uh, compass and I went from this bolt on the, the box over there and I measured to that bolt and I used that to make an arc. Then I measured from this bolt to this bolt to make an arc. Then I went from this bolt to this bolt to make an arc. And then from this bolt to this bolt to make an arc. That let me locate those two bolt holes and then to check it when I was done, I measured between these two bolts and they lined up perfectly. So all those bolts are in the perfect relation to each other. We should have just pivoted our box down and moved it forward and I actually moved it forward an inch because these are 7 16 bolts. That means they take an 11 16 headed socket or wrench and I, I'm going to have to weld spacers on here because I have to have room for the bolt head behind here once this is bolted to the frame. So I'm going to use a piece of three quarter inch steel. It'd be really nice if I had a lathe and I could turn down some really nice fancy spacers, but I don't. So I'm just going to take this piece of three quarter inch steel. I'm going to use a hole saw and I'm going to cut one inch slugs out of it. Then I already have a center drilled and I'll drill those out to seven sixteenths. Yeah, but they're all six times as thick as that. 
Our first test fit is uh, honestly surprisingly good. The only problem that we have now is my spacer that I cut for there wasn't big enough, so I just omitted it. We're not going four wheeling, we're just test fitting this. It doesn't need all four bolts. Um, the other problem that we've got is Ember, why don't you come around here? So the YJ has this bracket right here. That is for the track bar that would have been on a YJ, but this is a CJ, so we don't need that. We're just gonna cut it out of our way. We'll just take it off the frame, clean the frame up, so when we paint it, it's gone. Fix our bolt over there. We are still hitting our radiator support. Um, not too bad, just a tiny bit. And it's, it's pretty relaxed there, so it's not holding it up or anything. So what I'll probably do, since I have clearance everywhere else, is before I weld everything together, I'll slot this hole just a little bit. And that's okay, or I think it's okay, because after I get this all put up here, I'm gonna weld these bushings, these spacers, are gonna be welded solid to this 3 8 plate. And then on top of that, there's gonna be another piece that comes in here that's gonna be welded solid to that 3 8 plate and I'm gonna have two bolts that go into the bottom of the frame. And then also there'll be two gussets here from this plate that goes to the bottom here down to here that's all gonna keep that. So a little slot in this one hole here to get everything to line up, gonna be A-OK. -okay. Do you ever get so frustrated with working on a project that you're like, you know what, I just need a break and you've got to take a, a week off? Yeah, me too. It's been a week since we first started mocking up the steering box and I'm feeling better about it. So what we've done so far today is we went ahead and got our bracket and slotted this just a little bit so that it fits. It's clearing right now, but I think the grill is actually going to go up a little bit higher once we get the get the fenders bolted on. If not, we can we can clearance the grill a little bit if we have to. And it, it actually clears, it's, it's just close. We'll deal with that later. We have another problem. So Challenge. I, <laughs> challenge. <laughs> that's, our new, that's our new word. That's, our trigger word is problem, and our solution is challenge. So I just mocked the radiator up because I thought it'd be a good idea just to see how it was going to clear my power steering box. And if you look down there, you can see that it's not going to clear my power steering box. It's actually sitting an inch and a half too high right now. So my solution is not to worry about it. <laughs> Ignore it and hope it goes so away. <laughs> we're just going to, we're just going to hope for the best. Uh, no, really. Uh, I did a, just did some research and I'm pretty sure a YJ radiator has a wide bracket on this side to accommodate the steering shaft and the steering box. So we'll have to find a YJ radiator, which isn't a big deal. We've got to go to the junkyard and get some other parts, some other YJ parts. Um, then also, while I was looking at that, I looked at the YJ power steering hoses and it looks like they're gonna fit really well. They'll route the brackets over to the frame, or sorry, they'll route the hoses over to the frame so they'll clear everything. I went ahead and cut our, our uh, uh, pan hard bar radius rod bracket off the frame here so it's clearing now. But I got the, the steering box where I think it's gonna work. And let me show you how this is all gonna clear. Uh, I've got, this is mocked up right now. This is not gonna be how we're gonna run it because obviously we can't just put a long bolt through all that, it's just gonna twist. So the tie rod, which is this time here, will actually be over here where the original tie rod hole is. And then I'll put a spacer here and we'll put a bracket on there to make the tie rod double shear and support the top bracket for our drag link, which goes over to our pitman arm. And then we'll figure out a way to tie that whole piece into the spindle, either a couple of bolts or I'm not real sure. I have to get the tire off and see what I have clearance for. And then our drag link will come over here and we're gonna have to make this a little bit shorter. Um, and it's okay, because I, I bought this. These are threaded an inch and a half deep and our our heim only goes in there an inch, so we'll just cut a half inch off of either side and it'll be an inch shorter. But it's going to go on the bottom of the, the pitman arm like this. Nope, can't see it from there. Okay. 
And then, as you can see over on the other side, if you look all the way across, that gives us the clearance we need to get around that spring. And then, just for good measure, I did this once, but I'm gonna show you what I did. I, I just have the lift arms on the front of the Jeep right now. So we're just gonna pick it up. And there's no shocks on here limiting the travel or anything. So it's gonna go to the full droop of the springs. So now I pick the tires up and that's the full droop, that's the weight of the axle pulling the springs down. That's as far as they'll, they'll ever go. And like I said, the shocks will actually limit it more than that. But if we put this on here, we can see that we still have plenty of clearance here. And there's a good example of bump steer. So with the mount that it moved down, you can see that it changed the length of our drag link by almost a half an inch. Bump steer is a, real, a reality with a cross, crossover steering like this. There's no way to completely get rid of it. All you can do is limit it. The Jeep's never gonna be lifting the front tires off the ground while it's running down the road at any kind of speed where bump steer is actually an issue. So, as you can see at ride height, our bump steer is gonna get better. I mean, there's, there's gonna be less bump at actual ride height than there is all the way up there. Because the, the more in line, the less, the less angle you have, on this bar, the less bump steer you'll have. So if we could get this mounted clear down here, it would have almost no bump steer because it wouldn't change the length. It changes the, the position on the arc that this and that pivot point are. Now we need to finish mounting our steering box. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the bracket out for the bottom and get the last two bolts bolted in, figure out what we're gonna do and tack this all together. And then we can weld it up and our bracket for our steering box will be done. I think we have a usable bracket. Well, kinda, it's tacked together. So uh, right now I've just got the two spacers that go between the frame and our plate tacked in. And then I've got our, this is our brace piece here. And then our two gussets here. And I just put those in line with the bolt so that it'll keep it from flexing. I think it's gonna be good. I'm gonna take it off and get it welded up. We'll see how it turns out. Don't, don't look too close, cause the welds aren't great. But uh, some of the better welds I've done, but they're still not very pretty. Um, <clears throat> it's really hard to tell and you probably won't be able to see it in the camera, but I can see discoloring and no, I can't really feel it, but I'm sure I got lots of penetration. I was welding this on 200 amps, so I'm pretty happy with it. I don't think it's going to fall off. We're going to go ahead and bolt it on the Jeep and make sure it fits and then we'll uh, talk about what we're going to do next. All right. It fits. I'm... Um, Pretty sure that's not going anywhere. Check. Famous last words, right? <laughs> so the next thing that we, we are gonna work on is overcoming the challenge of the low mount of the steering on this, this side over here. I've been tossing it around in my head and going back and forth and I've decided what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and drop the axle completely out of here. I already kind of mocked it up so I know that I have plenty of tire clearance as long as I come straight up off that existing spindle. So I'm gonna pull it out, I'm gonna put it up on the bench where it's easier to work on and we're gonna get started on fabricating that high steer adapter that we're gonna put on the right side of this Jeep. All right guys, we got the front end out of the Jeep and uh, up here on the bench where we can work on it and I'm getting ready to start working on the high steer over here but I just figured I'd show you a, a little tip that you always, when you're working on one of these, you want to identify what the axle you have is so that you know what parts you need to order and everything. And the easiest way to do that on one of these Dana axles is right here on the long axle tube, you'll usually find a number. And I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that. If you get below, maybe you can see it right there, right no. there where the light's at. It's uh, Take the light off, maybe. Can you see it now? No. But, <laughs> Um, you can kind of see this etching on it. It's not super. I mean, you can see that there's an etching there. Okay, well that's that's the number. That's what identifies this axle. And then usually I just Google search it, and you'll find there's all kinds of charts and everything that'll tell you what they are. This one happens to be a Dana 30 out of uh, 82 to 86 CJ7 or CJ8. So that verifies what we already knew that it's the weakest point of the 
of the drivetrain system on this Jeep and, and we knew that, but it also verifies what we already knew that basically a 31 inch tire is gonna be pushing the ability of this axle. So if we were building the ultimate off-road rig, we'd replace this, but we're not. We're just trying to get this thing so that it can, you know, drive. And so this one's gonna be just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and get this taken apart and start getting everything cleaned up so we can start working on the high steer. Now we just gotta clean it up. Well, after we cool it off. Success! So, now that we've got the steering box mounted, we had to get the axle out, we've, we had to make this clear the leaf spring. Well, here's what I did. This is 3 8 flat plate. I cut a little, I bit, bent a little angle in it. I cut it and notched it around the upper ball joint. And then I cut my holes out. So basically what we have here is we have a tie rod flip, only we're using heim joints. And that gave me enough space here to space this out. And then I just made a spacer. It's not exactly lined up. When you cut them with a hole saw, it's hard to get them completely, perfectly concentric, but, but it, it, it's solid. It's not going anywhere. And then that allowed us to move our drag link all the way up here. And then that will hook up to the, imagine the steering box right here and the pitman arm right there. That'll hook up to the pitman arm. And then our steering should work and it'll clear the leaf spring will go right between these two. A couple of challenges we may have when we get ready to put this back in the Jeep that I already know is this might be too high with these big spacers under here. If that's the case, I don't need the spacers on the tie rods. This is never going to turn. It's just going to stay flat. So I can't take them out. The reason I put the spacers in there was to get this distance, which raised this high enough to get that drag link above the spring. And that's the whole point of this. The reason I did it like this is now we have two 5 8 bolts that are clamping this and making this essentially one with the the steering arm here and then in addition to that i drilled and tapped this over here and put a 3 8 bolt over here i'm not going to keep that stainless steel allen socket in there but i don't know if you can hear or not but it's raining like a cow pissing on a flat rock outside and i don't want to go out to the trailer and get a bolt so I'm just going to put that in there for right now. I just wanted to make sure everything was going to work. But that allows this out here. It eliminates a lot of the twisting action it's going to try to put on this steering arm by having this long arm here and should help keep it from breaking this. I think it's going to be perfect. Now, I just need to finish getting this cleaned up and get it back in the Jeep. But that's the steering fixed. I'm going to try to get this done before the, the video comes out. I don't know if it's going to happen. If it does, we'll have another clip and we'll show this all put back into the Jeep with the steering hooked up. It's not going to have tires on it for sure because as you saw, if you saw our short, I'm not sure. Uh, that rotor is not going to make it. It's way too thin. So I had to order rotors and since we'll put new rotors on, might as well put new pads on. I already had planned on rebuilding the calipers and everything, so I already had all those parts, but I originally was just gonna clean the, clean the rotors and the pads, because the pads are like brand new. I was just gonna clean them up and put them back on there, but I didn't look at them. I didn't look at, see the rotors until I got the axle out this morning, and at that point, it was too late to get them here before we have to put this video out on Sunday, so. I hope you enjoyed this. I didn't show you all the specs of everything I did because it doesn't matter because unless you're doing a CJ, that's not going to help you. But that's, hopefully I, I showed you a few of the things that you need to think about when you're going to start changing steering parts. Um, I'm not saying that, that this is guaranteed the best system on, on the market, but I believe it's going to work. It meets our purposes. This Jeep's never going to have more than a 31 inch tire with a Dana 30 axle anyway. I think that's going to be more than as strong as our axle is. So I'm happy with it. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I was kind of dreading doing this and I'm, I'm stoked. Anyway, I'll see you soon.